there you have it. Mm -hmm. Nintendo's E3 2021 Direct. As as usual, sometimes not seeming like it knows it's E3. Yeah. Their Directs do tend to just be, this is our next Direct. Yeah. Um, We did get Breath of the Wild 2, though. I think that was everyone's big ask, big want for this. So I think the majority of people are going to walk away satisfied. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Th- I think most people did not expect Breath of the Wild this year. So yeah, the, I mean, the big you know, Metroid is the big surprise that they remembered Metroid is a thing. Um, Do you uh, find it weird that it, they just said 2022? No, no, that's exactly what I, I. I said that before this started. You show you a quick Zelda trailer. It says 2022 on it. And that's it. Yeah, they're not going to lock in anything. It yet. could be like, could be holiday 2022. Yeah, he was certainly vague about progress. Yeah. It c- <laughs> I mean, it's entirely possible they're aiming for March but are ready to do November if they have to. How do you it's feel? Nintendo. Like, like yeah. they'll do that. They'll they'll do that if they do, if they have to and they won't tell you a date until they're sure. I feel like the Game and Watch was like the bone that they threw That's out they're trying for trying to do, yeah. Yeah, which I my interest in that is. Yeah. I would cer- I would certainly have preferred a, a collection of better games um or games I don't already have five times. I just I don't thing. want another Game and Watch. Like right. I got the last one it literally. I I'll never, say this: I'll never probably never order it. that because it's going to be worth a yeah. hundred dollars. That's why I bought the it. last one. Yeah, like it's. I've never opened it. I got it. I looked at it and I put it in a cabinet, and I haven't looked at it since. Like, but I'm a sucker. There's lots of suckers for that stuff. That's why Nintendo does it. So I'm part of the problem because I got the last one, mm-hmm. um, which I'm not proud of at this point. But um, otherwise, let's run down through all this stuff, Matt. Um, Tekken and Smash Brothers, Kazia. In Smash, cool, pretty big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, to get a third-party character into the game that is still active, I mean, there's still Tekken games coming out. Um, pretty big deal. Not for me. I'm not a Smash guy, but I think for most people who own a Switch, mm-hmm. it is a big deal. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy coming to Switch. I was kind of surprised. I don't. I do not remember that from. The press conference the other day, I don't remember Switch being listed on. I don't know. There's not, I mean, it's, it's a last-gen game. It doesn't really strike me as something they couldn't do in some form. I mean, it's possible, but there's a reason why they're the exception instead of the rule. Mm-hmm. Like, you look at, you know, games like Doom Eternal, for instance. Like, that's an anomaly. Like, most publishers aren't able to get those games up and running and looking that good. They also use footage from other platforms. Yeah, well, we'll see what it actually exactly. looks like. Exactly. Yeah, I'm a little worried that that game might run at, like, 25 frames a second or whatever. I'll never know. <laughs> yeah, and th- there's a lot of filler in this. Honestly, Worms, Astria Ascending, a Two Point Campus, Super Monkey Ball, Banana Mania. Um, then they got to Mario Party Superstars, which is like a rework mm-hmm. of old Mario Party stuff. Yeah, the N64 stuff. Yeah, which I think most people consider that kind of the golden age of... Of a certain age, yeah. Yeah, of the Mario Party franchise anyway. People our age consider that consider it that. Probably um, the people who were 12. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they didn't, never even heard of it. And then probably the biggest surprise of the whole thing, Metroid 5 Dread. In fact, mm-hmm. they are showing this right now. Yep. And actually, we're just going to go back to the shot that we used before so you guys first, can see yeah, it. First new episode in the series in 19 years. Yeah. Um, yeah, Metroid 5 is what they called it at first. Like, the first yeah. title that comes up is Metroid 5, and then they drop the Metroid yeah, well, Dread. all the Metroids have done that. Yeah. Like, Metroid, when you start up Super Metroid, it says Super Metroid 3 right. first. Yep. Which um, confuses a whole lot of people who never knew there was a Game Boy version. Yeah. It looks like there might be kind of like a Resident Evil nemesis, like, component to this. Yeah, where you... it seems like the, that thing is chasing her. Yeah. The whole I thing. mean, they're giving it an amiibo. Yeah. So... And, I mean, that's also what kind of happened in, uh, uh, you know, Shadow Samus in uh or Dark Samus in uh a couple other games. Yeah. Dark Samus was in Metroid Prime 2, right? Prime 2. And then there was uh there was the 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 X Parasite version of her in Fusion right. that chased you around. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Um I think it looks awesome. And it does appear that mm-hmm. Mercury Steam is creating it as we had thought while we were watching it live. Um and they've done a great job on pretty much every game they've done for Nintendo at this point. Um The Castlevania they did wasn't great. What was that called? Mirror of Fate or something like that? That was the 2D one they did. Yeah. yeah but they also did uh, the other ones, the Lords of Shadow. I mean, I like how the presentation, a lot of the cinematics and everything are like polygonal. 
and then the game plays in 2D. Mm-hmm. And then I like, I don't know if the game is actually going to do the whole flip thing where you're in a cinematic in 3D and then it cuts very quickly to like the 2D gameplay. I mean, it looks like it's doing that. Yeah. Um, right there. The idea for Metroid Dread came up 15 years ago. <laughs> we gave up on the idea. Yeah. That's crazy. Because Cass Messina didn't make that up. Oh, it just I didn't got think canceled. he did. I didn't think he did. I thought he had like solid information. I just never dreamed all this time later that it would finally materialize into a real game. Yeah, well, like he, and he just said they tried to do it again and then they abandoned it again. Like Metro Dread has been a constant kind of ghost in the in the halls of yep, Mercury's team. And they said they met and they said, "Yeah, that's interesting. I love that they're telling the whole story today." And even though I already told it. Yeah, today Matt Casamassina is uh <laughs> feeling pretty good cuz a lot of people doubted him on that scoop back in the day. They didn't think that he knew what he was talking about, but he did. Yeah, those people were wrong. Was, Obviously. He, he definitely knew. It was definitely a real thing. They just canceled it. Yeah. Like, that was the thing is he found out about something that was not supposed to be learned about a- externally. Yeah. And, like, Nintendo is so tight about stuff like that. It was. It's a very hard thing to confirm. Emmy. E-M-M-M-I. E-M-M-I is the name of that mm. creature that follows you around. I'm really excited for this. Yeah. And it's coming this year. Mm-hmm. That's the best part about it. We don't have to wait forever, and they have a hard release date for it, which is awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I did. You know, I have speculated before that basically, as soon as they realized that Metroid Prime Four was going to be a problem, they sh- would, you know, get Mercury Steam on that shit, and uh, like, so, you know, bring a new, you know, obviously a new two D Metroid is a big thing for the fans, but also like bringing back the dread concept and doing that is like that's a huge sort of like yeah we're we know like we're listening like that that makes you feel i think that makes a lot of metroid fans feel seen it's dog whistling you know, to in the a, metroid yeah, fans in a way that like you know they felt ignored for the 25th anniversary thing yeah. there's, there's a pretty good way to do that yeah yeah they're like we're we actually do listen to you every once in a while when Another, when you guys but, make sense it looks like there's going to be different <laughs> each area is going to have a different stalking robot oh interesting with yeah you're right things. yeah uh, it looks like they're just different colors and probably have different abilities or whatever. Yeah, well, this one's like four-legged, so it's like some kind of hound thing. Yeah. It looks cool, man. I'm yeah. excited for it. Um, and that's coming October 8th. Mm-hmm. Not long to wait for that at all. Um, let's see. Let's move on. And then they got into more whatever. They yeah. uh, basically just dance, cruise and blast. They showed show Mario Golf Super Rush, which is coming the tw- on the 25th, like in a couple weeks. Um, then they showed Monster Hunter Stories 2, which we've seen. We saw in Capcom yesterday. We've seen a bunch of that before. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Mar- uh, WarioWare, Get It Together, two-player co-op. That's coming September 16th, it looks, by my handwriting. Mm-hmm. I'm scribbling or it down. 10th. I, was, I thought it was 10th. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, may, yeah, maybe it is. It's either the 16th or the 10th, one or the other. Um which I'm really excited about. It feels like there's a whole generation of players who haven't really played WarioWare. Mm-hmm. Um, and for those of you who don't know what it is, it's basically just a mini game collection. But they're not like Mario Party style mini mini games. They're these weird kind of avant garde things. Yeah, and <laughs> that, they take they, they they take three seconds. Yeah, they last like three to five seconds max. And some of them are like really gross or really bizarre. There's um, a lot of them. There's just like you do a thing. It's like, oh wait, what? Oh, and like yeah, it, you'll it's play like, a game and it'll like take you back yeah. the first time you play it because you're like, the, what am I? By what? the time you by the time you figure out what just happened, you're on the next one. Right. Basically. Yeah. It's fun and it's like breakneck. Mm-hmm. Playing it with another person should be fun too. It looks like they're all new mini games because what they've done in the past is like recycle the old recycle mini lot, games. Yeah. I'm sure there will be greatest hits ones in this. Not, too, and, there, and there should be because some be. of them are really amazing and people have The twist on this is that instead of like drawing on the screen because obviously you're not playing a DS anymore, you are uh, moving one of the WarioWare characters around and they all have different abilities to help solve the mini games. There's multiple ways to f- solve, solve the, the mini games using yeah. their abilities. So Which is not the way it used to be. No, that's a big change. Yeah. Um, but, it se- but it seems recognizable still. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Kind of classic Nintendo reinvention. Yep. And again, that looks to be the 10th or the 16th. <laughs> uh, next up, Shimagami Tensei 5. That's coming out November 12th. Um, I thought it looked good. Not sure why it's taken five years to create it, although those games typically are pretty big. Yeah, they're, they're extensive. That so is the mainline ga- series is, is a 100-hour game, usually. And I'll say this. like I haven't really played a JRPG since Persona 5. Like This might be my next one. I mean, this one, like, 
the Shin Megami Tensei mainline games are more like Pokemon games to me. Yeah, because like sto- they're all creature raising. They're very story light. They're mostly dungeon crawls with creature raising and fusion, yeah. and fusion fusioning and all that stuff. It's uh, it's a very you know there's no high school you know schedule simulator like right. in the Persona games. Like it's a very different experience. It's a some would say it's a more pure experience. Um, and in the past, I've thought Persona was more engaging, but I don't know if I feel that way anymore. <laughs> Maybe I just want a simple, straightforward demon crawl at this point. I mean, it's been a few years since I've really put a lot of time into a JRPG. I'm pretty much due for one. We'll see what else is happening around that time. It is coming out like right in the heart of review season, so... Maybe I'm over-promising right now. This might be a game yeah, that I play. You might just be playing Call of Duty at that point. Probably. Yeah, this is probably something that I'll play over, like, Christmas break or something, I'm guessing. When I just want to sit around and kick it and take it easy. Um, next up... Nothing easy about Shin Megami Tensei. No, there's really not. That's true. It's not like... It's not a relaxing of, it's game. It's not one of those easy, breezy no, no, style no, no, games, no. for sure. Uh, next up, this was a surprise. Fatal Frame... Maiden of Blackwater, the Wii U game mm. we thought was going to be trapped on the Wii U. It is not. It is coming to Switch. Game isn't great, to be perfectly honest. No, it's, it's not amazing, but uh, it doesn't deserve to be left in the it's Wii U worth, forever. It's worth like keeping around or yeah. reviving and making sure it has a kind of an eternal future, so to speak. Speaking of which, next up, Doom Eternal DLC coming to Switch finally. Really hard. Make sure you today. Yeah, today. Make sure you know that before you buy it. It is really challenging, and this is someone coming from someone who plays a lot of shooters. It is one of the hardest uh, shooters that I've played in quite a while. Um, then Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 coming very soon on mm-hmm. June 25th. It looked pretty good. Yeah. I thought it looked better than I expected running on Switch, mm-hmm. pre- presuming that was Switch footage, and I think it was because it didn't look as good as the other ones we've seen. Uh, Strange Brigade, which is like a free-to-play co-op shooter. We've known about that for years. Mario Plus Rabbids, which was shown at Ubisoft. Advance Wars remade the first two games in one package. A franchise I feel like a lot of younger players may not even... Yeah, that, that series has been missing in action for a long time. For a time. long time. Yeah, I mean, since the GBA, right? Uh, has no, there, there been were, one There since? were DS ones. There were, were there? There was at least one DS Black Hole. Black, was that the Black Hole one? I thought that there was, was on there GBA was a as there well. was a dual there was a, no I had a DS name there was definitely a DS was ca- game because yeah. there was a one where it was a dual screen thing and you could use the you could team up two generals to do the super move thing that's right that, that's right I can't remember yeah. the name of the game yeah. it was it's, it was a, one of those things that, like the subtitle was DS it's still been dual strike is dual what strike. Vincent is saying. it's it. still been a really long time yeah 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 and the original so, DS was a long time ago yeah and so if you've never heard of Advance Wars. Put this on your your calendar to buy. Like, especially two games in one. Um, I love these games. Uh, Day of Ruin, that was the other one. They're also perfect for handheld play because Mm -hmm. it's turn-based, and you can just, like, stop, throw it in your bag, pick it up. Mm -hmm. Nothing's on a timer. But Uh, the ones in this collection were the GBA ones. Right, yeah, Um, which is great. They're great games. Highly recommended. Yeah, Black Hole Rising was a really good game. Yep. They're coming out Q4 of this year, so not long to wait for those. Um, Hyrule Warriors DLC, something Vincent actually predicted in his uh, Entirely Too Many E3 Predictions article. Um, That is coming on the 18th. That's, like, tomorrow or Mm. Friday. I guess it's Friday. Um, Then Skyward Sword. They really didn't share anything else about that. I'm kind of surprised, honestly. It's sort of like, it's coming next month. Just buy it, please. Yeah, they kept it short and sweet. I really thought they would focus on that a lot, but they didn't. Uh, It's coming on July 16th. Uh, then they showed the Zelda Game & Watch to celebrate the anniversary. That's coming on November 12th as well. Um, so you're getting Shin Megami Tensei Five and the Zelda Game & Watch on the same day. Um, as Matt pairing. said during the live commentary, like buy it if you're a collector because the value of them do go up. Yeah, you'll be able to flip that if you want. Eventually. I or the day. I, I mean, wouldn't that, thing, buy that pre-orders on that's going to sell in a minute. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, it's going to go away like that. I wouldn't buy it to like play it or own it. Mm-hmm. I would buy it as a collector, to be perfectly honest with you. And then everything gets wrapped up with the first. It shows the first in-game footage. Yeah. Of Breath of the Wild two, um, it is coming in 2022. Nothing more specific than that. And my fantasy team cries. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But I knew that was a long shot all along, and it was to me it was worth the risk of a nine point seven being on my team. So um, now I, it takes two is on my squad. So it, yeah. it'll I think it all works out. I got like a nine or nine point something. So yeah, I think you still got a couple zeros in there. Am I gonna get a zero? I'm pretty sure you're gonna get two. For what? 
Well, I'd have to look God at God of War and Breath of the Wild. God of War and Breath of the Wild, it. and you had a couple other things in there that I don't think you're going to make it. it. I think it all depends on um, Dead Rising. Or not Dying, Dead Rising. Dying Light 2. Dying Light 2. Yeah. I think if, if it releases, I think I have a full squad. I think if Dying Light 2 were coming out this year, we would have heard about it this week. No, they did say. Oh, you're right. They didn't show it this week. But they just said like a week ago that it's coming out this year. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. December 7th. December that's, that's 7th. Yeah. Real close. It is. I don't know where it would have ended up, I guess, if it didn't make Xbox. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it, I guess it doesn't really have a home yeah. uh, in considering if who If it didn't make Xbox, then it wasn't going to yeah. really make anything, unfortunately. But we'll see. Um, so what do you think, Matt, overall, of what we saw from Nintendo? I think it's pretty much kind of what I expected for yeah, the most not bad. part. I mean, like, the, the you know, Metroid is a good surprise that they remembered. Um mm-hmm. And uh, otherwise, it was pretty much what I thought we were gonna get. You know, like the two, the two nice surprises were uh, Metroid Dread and the the Advance Wars Collection. Yeah, WarioWare. Um, I was pretty Wario happy Wario about. Nice. Um, Lots of stuff missing from what we talked about in the pre-show, though. Yeah. They didn't even show Pokemon Diamond and Pearl or Pokemon. Pokemon Legends Arceus. I didn't expect to see Arceus just because it's next year. Uh, and there's probably nothing nothing really new to show yet. Yeah, I bet we'll see a direct of that around the time that Diamond and Pearl come out. Yeah, just to keep you keep you hungering for the next thing sort of thing no splatoon 3 no no bayonetta 3 they mentioned metroid prime they 4 like i said kinda. they mentioned metroid prime 4 and that was it <laughs> that I was it um but pretty much everything else we talked about they did end up showing well no no more heroes 3 they didn't show that either yeah that was a little surprising yeah maybe you're right they didn't want to show something that violent <laughs> it's possible um interesting so it's time for us to give a letter grade to Nintendo Direct E3 2021. Before we do that, here's a word from our sponsor. It's time to find out why everyone is buying homes in Montana. The Shazer Ryan Realty has a totally remodeled four bedroom, three bath home for sale in Libby, Montana. Nestled next to the mountains on Libby Creek, this split level home features almost 3,300 square feet of living space and includes a fully finished basement, a two car garage, a barn, a shop, and much more. There's a covered back porch just off the kitchen so you can enjoy your morning coffee the way nature intended. At $479.9, it's an absolute steal. They're selling homes as fast as they can list them. So if you're interested, do not hesitate to call Doug DeShazer at 406 406- 291-1643. Even if you don't live in Montana, you can contact the professionals at DeShazer Ryan Realty and they can help you with property in your area. For more, head to DeShazerRyanRealty.com. That's DeShazerRyanRealty.com. All right, so they're playing Metroid Dread right now in the treehouse. We're just going to put that on in the background while we do the, mm-hmm. do the rest of it. And they are, in fact, you know, shifting from 3D cutscenes to the gameplay. Yeah, it's like, cool. Yeah, it's just like the other one. It's pretty slick. Yep. It looks awesome, actually, what <laughs> they're showing of it so far. Uh, so we're just going to leave this up and let you guys check out Mo- Metroid Dread while we uh, give our letter grades and do the Q&A. In fact, you can get your questions into the chat right now. We're going to answer as many questions about Nintendo as you want because this is it, Matt. This is this is really the end of E3 2021 for us. We'll be back Friday for some form of an E3 wrap-up show. I'm really starting to have issues with trying to do a best of E3 this year because we haven't played anything. Uh, but we will do some form. I played Sable. Yeah. I'm going to put a demo up. Now that I have some time today, I'm probably going to go download all the demos that came out and try it to give them a go. A, assuming Final Fantasy Origin works now. Yeah, I'll, I'll download I that. I think they I'll fixed check it. that out. We'll see. Um, but now I'll have a little bit of time to breathe. But this is it. This is like the end of our live E3 coverage. It's been a weird week, Matt. <laughs> I think in a lot of ways, a lot of disappointment, I think, for a lot of people. I've seen a lot of people on Sifted really bummed about E3 this year. I don't think it's been as bad as some people are saying, but I don't feel th- no. feel like it's been great either. It certainly doesn't feel like a triumphant return to the world or anything. It's Which just, but it's what, it's what, is to be expected, because yeah. just today, in fact, today in California, the mandates were lifted. Mm-hmm. So the only time you have to wear a mask now in California is if a business mandates it. Totally cool. Or if you're inside with five thousand people or more. Yeah, yeah. So or like, it, so, like on, I think on bus, a, a, a lot of places are because Cal OSHA has not approved the lifting of the mandate, so a lot of businesses are going to stick with it. A lot of, like public transportation is going to stick with it. Like, you know, this is more for like, you know, don't yell at people who don't have masks on if you see them on the sidewalk, right. Kind of thing. Yeah. You know? uh, so anyway, it is the date 
with E three ending, like it was just it was so close to being able to happen. But you mm-hmm. understand why the ESA is like we can't risk it. Who knows when that stuff's gonna lift? And yeah, and other countries aren't in the same spot. Yeah, so they're in, you, you, a lot you, of other countries are still because in it's mess. an international event. You basically need to have everybody around the yeah. world sort of you know in the same place, and that won't be till next year. Yep. So. All right, let's give the Nintendo Direct for E3 2021 letter grades. Matt, what is your letter grade? For Nintendo? Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give this a B plus. Okay. Um, the plus is explicitly because of Metroid. If it had been something else being revealed that wasn't Metroid, it would probably still be a B. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it did uh, pretty much what I expected, plus a couple of surprises that uh, appealed to me very, very nicely. Um, I've got some actual stuff to look forward to in Q3 and Q4 now, thanks to Metroid and Advance Wars and a couple of the other things in here, uh, and some other stuff from other conferences. But, yeah. like, um, this, uh, unlike most of the other presentations, Nintendo's Direct actually helped kind of solidify my mental picture of what I'll be playing at the end of 2021. Yeah. So I give them credit for that. So I'm going to go with a B plus. Okay. I'm going to go with a B minus, uh, my highest grade of E3 yeah. 2021. Also mine. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, what really struck me about it is that they showed a bunch of stuff that we weren't aware of that is really exciting and how much stuff that they left on the table that's mm-hmm. still out there. Like, we just ran through all these exciting games that weren't even a part of this. Two Pokemon games, Splatoon, Bayonetta, Metroid Prime. I mean, there are all these games that are coming to their system they didn't even have to focus on. Um, I think my biggest criticism of it was... It really shows the lack of third-party support that Nintendo has right now. Um, Because if you start looking at the third-party stuff that they had to show to let people know, as you said, that there's lots of stuff to play on Switch before until the end of 2021, it's not all that inspiring. You've got, like, Just Dance, Cruisin' Blast, (laughs) Monster Hunter Stories 2. That looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm pretty excited for that. But then it just starts getting into Danganronpa, an old Fatal Frame game. Doom Eternal DLC that's old for most people. Tony Hawk 1 and 2, which has been out for months mm-hmm. for most people. Strange Brigade. Like, dude, they showed Strange Brigade in their E3 press conference. So the third-party support is a problem for Nintendo. There's no doubt about it. But the good news is is that because their studios are now unified and they're all just creating games for Switch, the first-party stuff is just way more robust than it has been for a Nintendo platform in a really long time. And I think that's what stuck out to me the most. Like, I think we're finally really seeing the fruits of that. Not having split your development teams across a handheld and a console. Um, We've seen it since, obviously, the Switch launch, but I think now you're really seeing it. When you Mm -hmm. don't show that lineup of games because you have other stuff worth showing, that's impressive. Um, To not show Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remake. That's coming this year. Yep. And you don't have to show it. So... I think it just shows that, you know, the Switch is just a great idea for consumers, for Nintendo, for, and for pretty much every angle, except for Matt, <laughs> <laughs> who would just prefer a docked console at all times. Yeah. But but most people, I think, like the, at least the option to take it handheld, and I think the the concept behind it has really worked out for Nintendo, and that they, you know, all their developers are pulling in the same direction now, instead of two different directions. Mm-hmm. And I think this year, for me... It really hit home more than any yeah. year, year before this. But uh, I will say, uh, you got some splaining to do, Schreier. Yeah. Yeah, well, no Switch Pro. Not even a hint of it. No. I do think That's that... That's a little embarrassing. Yeah, I do think that it exists. exists. I think oh, it, yeah, I, think I do too. It's coming alongside Breath of the Wild 2. Yeah. And it's just Breath of the Wild 2's release date is going to determine when the revision comes out. Let's talk about Breath of the Wild 2. We haven't yet. Um, what we just saw... Uh, it looks significantly better than the first Breath of the Wild. Visu- yeah, visually, definitely an upgrade. Yeah, for sure, hands down, for sure. Like that's the first thing that's that stuck with me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's easy to remember the first Breath of the Wild because it's just shown so often. Mm-hmm. If you're on YouTube or whatever, there's just always clips running. So it's not like one of those old games where like your memory is hazy. Mm-hmm. You don't quite remember how it looks. As soon as I saw that, I was like, oh wow, okay, that's a big step up. What new sort of gameplay elements did you notice? That teleportation thing he did through the yeah, rock? The, the fact he, it looks like some kind of water magic that lets him soak through yeah, the ground. Yeah, like solid objects mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, um, and it seems like flying is going to be a bigger deal. I mean, obviously the hang, obviously the the parachute hang glider thing is probably the biggest takeaway from Breath of the Wild for other games that have been mm-hmm. inspired by it. Like, everybody can glide now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Looks like you'll be able to free fly. Yeah, it looks like the looks too. like there's gonna be a lot more flight stuff because of the the skyward the skyward sword influence of things in the sky. Yeah. Um, uh, I wish we saw more. That seemed like I don't I didn't time it, but that seemed like a really short trailer. It was um, like a minute maybe. Yeah, I mean, I didn't didn't shock me. We didn't see a lot. They're, they'll blow it out when they're ready for it. But uh, um, I still do believe that that game is going to be co op. They're gonna be also play. It's a second player will be able to play as Zelda. So you think it'll be co op and not just you can one player can play as either one. Yeah, I think I think there will be a co op option. Mm. I think it just it just makes too much damn sense. It does make sense, but it's Nintendo. I don't know, man. I'd put that at fifty fifty at best. I don't know. We'll see. I, I think, would say this. If I think that's gonna be their new gimmick. For if this. it is there, I would say that's why it's taken so long. I would agree. To yes. Finish the game. Yeah. <laughs> so it's possible. Because it has taken too long to finish this game. I mean, yeah, that that theory is in part my explanation for why it's taken half a decade gotcha, to make gotcha. this game. Okay. Because you, the first time you first time you make a Zelda playable in a mainline game and b um, uh, cooperative play in a Zelda game, like you have to nail that. Yep. And they know that. Yeah, Nintendo knows they have to nail everything really, but they need to nail that in particular. Yeah. So my idea is maybe... one of the only places left for them to go. Yeah. With that series. I will say this, my prediction that is coming like in march like the anniversary of the first game the fact that it just says 2022 i do not feel confident in that prediction anymore like when um, it, it, just saying 2022 to me means like probably holiday 2022 i wouldn't read it that way um, i hope not but it's uh it could be like it's i'm not saying it's solid like but nintendo says that all the time uh, yeah, they use the, the the year as a placeholder, and sometimes it comes out early in the year. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't yeah. think it means anything. I do think it means they're letting them themselves have some space in case they can't put it out by the end of the fiscal year. But like, um, you know, putting it out the same month as the original one uh, with the Switch from five years previous uh, makes way too much sense. Yeah. Um, if they can, I think they will. If they can't, they haven't locked themselves into anything, so it's fine. Um, you know, it's, it's a long way out. Yeah, that's a long way away. Uh, yeah. So it's not uh, the end of the world if they can't do it. Game looks really good, though. They were very, very careful about what they showed in that trailer. Yeah. Uh, they didn't really give away many hints at all at what's going on with it or what the plot is or anything. So um, we'll just have to keep waiting. <laughs> that's all I can say. we just have to keep waiting for more information. And I'm sure by the time I get home from this, Somebody will have already published a YouTube video yeah. that goes frame by frame and explains everything that's in there. Of course. And, I'll, and, I'll be, and that's the content I'm looking for, Matt. Like, I'll be looking for that video when I get home to check it out. Um, all right. Anything else you want to add about Nintendo, Matt? Um, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, they, they did okay. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was good. All right. Let's move to some Q&A. Certainly, uh, certainly uh, stopped some of the Capcom bleeding. Yeah. One thing I noticed. I'm not as annoyed that we came in the morning here as we did we yeah, came in the yeah, afternoon exactly. for Capcom. Let's put it that <laughs> Agreed. Way. Agreed. One thing I'm noticing about this uh, Metroid Dread gameplay, it looks like there might be a lot of stealth. Yeah, you are running away from the robot. Things. And there are some yeah. rooms. And the robots where you're, like, catching you seems to be an, the robot. Like... The robots catching you seem to be an insta kill. Oh really? You just die. He got caught by the thing, and it just said game over. So, yeah. uh, okay. Uh, let's get to some questions. If you guys have any. There are some in here. Oh, there's a bunch in here. Oh, a ton in here. We're going to answer as many as we can. Um, wow, there's so many. Okay, guys, maybe we can't answer them all. Uh, all right, let's start with Geno Mike 1. Dying Light, was it two different shows? No, go- no gameplay. Oh, okay. And I can't remember which show had it, but I saw it twice. Both times shocked that they didn't show gameplay or release date. All right, at least they did show it someplace then. Um, from EDH420, length and price of Metroid Dread. Good question. Uh, let's see. Length, I'm guessing six to seven hours. Um, price, 50 bucks. I'm going to say it's more like 15 to 20. Hours? Uh, in terms of like doing everything. Okay. Um, you mean like 100%ing it, getting yeah. all the Metroid, upgrades? Metroid 2 was, like their Metroid 2 was, and even their uh, Mirror of Fate was fairly robust it was longer than that um but yeah i think 50 bucks is probably accurate honestly maybe that's just wishful thinking on my part but to me 
games like this, 2D games on Switch, should be should be 50 bucks. You'd think, I mean, I don't know, if anyone's going to charge 60 bucks for this, it's Nintendo. Oh, they could get 60 um, for it, no doubt. I mean, in which maybe that is what end up, ends up happening, but I don't know. It's a tough ask, I think, but fans will pay it. Yeah, but I'll if pay you, it. But look, also, if you're concerned that Metroid isn't selling as well as your other franchises... Maybe it's, it might be nice to throw the fans a bone here or there. And or that's how you make money off the thing you're making <laughs> You can any keep money making on. Metroid games. Uh, so pretty wide range there between Matt and I, but we agree on the price. Um, let's see. Bachby, are you surprised they didn't do the uh, same thing? Me- me- Metroid is 60 It's 60 Vincent says it's on the site already. Damn. <laughs> Should have known. Should have known better. I mean, if they got the balls to charge 60 for that Link's Awakening uh, remake, remake that they made. You're going to charge 60 bucks for this. Yeah, I, that's too high. Um, but also, that makes me believe that maybe it is longer. Yeah. Yeah. It's less than Super Metroid cost. Yeah. Um, Bakby, are you surprised they didn't do the same thing they did with uh, Mario All-Stars for Zelda? And if, for those of you who are not familiar, but I'm guessing most of you are, it was a collection of 3D platformers that was released for a Switch. Uh, it was Super Mario 64, Super Mario Galaxy, and Super Mario Sunshine all in one package. Um, no, I'm not surprised. No, not even a little bit. No. <laughs> it's way, way harder, I think, to get a collection of Zelda games together. Um, I also feel like the value of older Zelda games is higher than the value of old Mario 3D platformers. As far as, Somewhat. like... I also think Like, that... you could remake Ocarina of Time by itself and release mm-hmm. it as one product and sell, like, gangbusters. Whereas I'm not sure that that could have happened for like no. Also, they the, some of the Mario three the Mario All Stars thing was a real quick and dirty thing. Yeah, um, you know they just sort of moved those three games over. Yep. And with Twilight Princess and Wind Waker, you are going to have to port over the Wii U ports, which means you have to figure out a way around all the things you put in the gamepad, which means completely redoing the UI and completely doing redoing how you interact with the game, all new menu stuff. Like it, like there's a lot more work to bringing those over. Yep. Um, or like o- even Ocarina 3D and Mar- Majora's Mask 3D, you have to completely rework that from a dual screen setup, just yeah. like the Wii U stuff. So there's a lot more work that would go into doing that collection. Would I buy that collection for a high price? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But like, it doesn't super shock me that they haven't done that yet. Me either. I think they will. I think they. W- I don't think they're going to leave Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD to languish on the previous system forever. But yeah. Not. Not today. Well, before the show kicked off, maybe you tuned in late. I actually mentioned like maybe yeah. an Ocarina of Time remake might be something that. They Again, would show. I I am going to continue to insist that we will not see an Ocarina of Time update remake whatever until 2023, which is the 25th anniversary. Yep. Otherwise, you're waiting until 2028. So. Um, Ed Rock, the truth. Do you think they will ever port over Star Fox Zero to the Switch with a much better control scheme? No. Because no. <laughs> that game isn't worth porting over. It's just not good. Mm-hmm. Like, I yeah. see no reason to do it that. It kind of killed the. It IP wasn't for even a while. just the control scheme that made that game bad. Mm-hmm. Like, the controls weren't great, but it was everything else wasn't good either. It just. No. It was all a bad idea. Yeah, when Not working with a partner work. goes wrong, essentially. Pretty much. Um, oh, Vero Games says, it's been confirmed via official Twitter, the Guardians of the Galaxy on Switch is a cloud version of the game. Mm. There you go. Okay. Okay. Um, thanks for clearing, clearing that up for people who watch this. El Guapo3385, what was the biggest omission slash missed opportunity from the E3 present, Nintendo's E3 presentation? I mean, t- Switch Pro. I guess that's yeah. definitely the biggest omission. Hardware is always mm-hmm. going to trump everything else. That's definitely. But again, if they don't know when they're going to get Breath of the Wild two out, they don't know when they're going to get that hardware. Very possible. Gonna... And Nintendo almost never shows new hardware without a re- release date. Yeah, but that's I think everyone is going to be going to say that was the biggest thing missing, without mm-hmm. a doubt. I mean, but you can go down the list. There's tons of stuff. Metroid Prime Four. I would have loved to have seen that. At least they mentioned it kind of. Um, I mean, they didn't really show Skyward Sword, which is crazy. I don't think so. I, I think Skyward Skyward Sword is a known quantity. It's a remake of a of a game that nobody even liked very much. Like, it's, and most people didn't play. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah. I would not have expected. I never expected them to deep dive into that. Like, it's yeah. just. It's a here. It is. Comes out in a month. Just fucking buy it. Yeah, I like, mean they mentioned it's it. It's sixty dollars for some reason. Just don't talk to us. You know, it's like. <laughs> Uh, no Diamond and Pearl remake. They didn't really cover that. Yeah. Pokemon Legends Arceus, Platoon Three. But in, oh, we, I, no one even. There wasn't even a, a Pokemon in this. Right. There was no Pokemon. It is weird at all. Not even a Pikachu. Yeah. Shot. That is bizarre. That doesn't happen very often. No. 
especially for an E3 presentation. Uh, but yeah, definitely, I think Switch Pro or whatever, Switch 2, whatever they end up calling it, was the big omission. And I'm sure Bloomberg agrees with that right now. Yeah. They've been reporting on that ad nauseum for a while. Um, I'm going to continue to insist that that is connected so strongly with the Breath of the Wild 2 release date that they that Breath of the Wild 2 is di- dictating when they can show that new, new review. I'm, I would concur with that. Um, the Big Smoke 82, thanks for doing the streams. I really enjoyed watching them with everyone. Thank, thanks to you guys for showing up for all these. Like... Without you guys, all the fun is gone. It's just Matt and I just hanging out talking like we would anyway. So uh, thanks to everyone showing up. I know the schedule's been crazy. It's like one day it starts at one time, the next day it starts at another time. Uh, Thanks for following along, uh, following us on Twitter so you know when all our stuff is going live. We really appreciate it, you guys, for showing up. Um, It's funny, like, because of our E3 streams, we're, like, right on the cusp of, like, becoming partners on Twitch. Yeah. Because we don't usually don't stream enough hours. Like we have enough mm. people who show up for our streams, we're just not doing enough hours per month. And this month, we may actually like become partners because of E3, because of you guys, because our audience has been showing up for all our E3 streams. Like our average per stream is high enough, mm. and our hours are tracking that if we do a really long game face, like we may actually make it. But we gotta, never gotta get stream. that blue check mark. Yeah, I mean, we never stream like gameplay like right. most people do. And that's an easy way to get to like the bottom, the floor of the hours you need to stream per month. And we don't, we mm-hmm. just stream game face. So thanks guys for showing up and thanks for the kind words. I hope you guys have all enjoyed our streams. Um, here's from Vincent, who's been busting his ass curating during E3. So send him a big thanks in the chat. Um, I'm so conflicted that Advance Wars was my biggest dream from this direct, but the new style looks ugly at first glance. I don't think so. Yeah, it looked pretty standard yeah, to me. I think I it know. just looks like Advance yeah, Wars. Yeah, it looks like Advance Wars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's very plain. That's the way it's always been. Uh, I didn't have a problem with the visuals, honestly. Nah, it looked fine. Yeah, I thought it looked okay. Uh, do we have any more? Um, Dan Boy 90 I am pumped for Advance Wars in handheld mode. That's the only way I'll play it. Like, I'm not going to play Advance Wars on my TV. It's, like, the perfect handheld game. That's what you guys should all be targeting, targeting it for. Um, Vincent is saying the Zelda trailer was just under two minutes, so a little, little longer than I thought. Um, Derek D111. What's up, Derek? How you doing, man? Hope you're enjoying E3 as much as you can. Big supporter. We appreciate you. Uh, now that you've seen all the major press conferences, as you more or less excited for the fall, are you more or less excited for the fall slash holiday? Yeah, I always am. Yeah, I mean a little more. Like, I get a Metroid game. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I mean I think there's plenty of great games coming. Yeah, I got Metroid holiday. and Forza Horizon. Like, I'm I'm into it. There's still stuff that isn't announced. Remember, there's just yeah. because it wasn't announced at E3 doesn't mean it's not coming. We so. still got to see what Halo's doing. Yeah. We'll see. It's still holiday. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, really starting to get nervous about that one. Yeah, and as Vincent said, Metroid Dread is, in fact, $60. Um, El Guapo 3385 is 2022 looking like 2017 again. Ha ha. Um, a little bit, I guess. Mm-hmm. Some of the games that are coming back around for that yeah. same sort I'm, of milestone. I'm hoping uh, Horizon makes it this year, so it's not a, not a full replay of 2017. It's looking... Because... A Horizon sequel and uh, Breath of the Wild 2 coming out right alongside each other in March is literally 2017. A repeat of 2017. And it could happen. It could. It could. <laughs> I'm saying Horizon is probably about 50-50 right now, whether it makes it this mm-hmm. year. I think it will. Yeah. Otherwise, they got a big gap there. They do. Yeah. But Sony has not cared about Sony. Yeah, back. Sony's willing to do it. I mean, yeah. they, they'll wait until it's done. So we'll see. Yep. Uh, Justin Horman says thanks. Thank you, Justin, for all your support. Thanks to all you guys for all your support. You guys are awesome. I love all you guys. Uh, Eric Cartman it says five hour game face. No, that's yeah. not, that's not happening. Absolutely not. Uh, Matt and I are gonna need a break after this week. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see if you have any other ones. Here we go. Uh, Gino Mike one. Last question. Um, non Nintendo question is Baldur's Gate confirmed to come out this year? I didn't see it anywhere during E3. I didn't either, actually. No, I don't think it is confirmed to come out this year, but they are targeting it. Okay. Like their original, when they went early access, they basically said we we plan to release. Like it was like that was like October last year. Yeah. And they said our target is next a year from now. It seems like it's gonna make it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it hasn't had a big update for a while, but like it doesn't seem like any reason it wouldn't. Yeah. But, you know who knows? Yeah. I hope not. It's on my team. Yep. Um, okay. That looks like that's it for the questions. 
Thanks again, everyone, for all your support during E3. Uh, once again, before we go, our shirts, our brand new shirts, the Sifted Army shirt, all on sale at rock bottom prices right now, 40% off on both our new designs, both this shirt and the arcade cabinet shirt. Uh, if you've been waiting for the price drop to get those, go get them. I believe every size, although I didn't check last night after I got home, I believe there's at least one of every size left right now. Uh, maybe not for long, uh, but you can get, pick those up at sifted.net slash store. Um, if you want to kick us, maybe you're someone who just watches our streams or you watch our stuff on YouTube. Maybe you want to kick us like a tip for our E3 coverage. If you've, been, if you've been watching all week long, you can do that at sifted.net slash donate. You can give us a dollar, hundred dollars, whatever you want. Uh, you can basically enter the amount that you want and then pay for it right there. Uh, that's a good way to help us out if you've been appreciating our coverage. We will be back on Friday for what I'm not 100% sure of right now. <laughs> I'm kind of formulating that in my head. Normally, that would be our best and worst of E3 awards, but we've been unable to play like anything, and that is a big uh, requirement for us to give games awards from E3. So I'm still trying to sort that out, but we will be back for a stream on Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash sifted games matt thank you for coming back it's been great being back in the studio with you man hmm. like i feel like the, the connection the conversation is way better than it is when you're coming in through this little zoom screen over here the way it's been uh so it's exciting for matt to be back in the studio the audio is a lot better yes <laughs> you don't sound like you're talking through a tin can anymore um and we just appreciate you guys for all your support through the whole year but particularly during E3. Uh, despite the fact that I feel like the show wasn't as good as maybe a lot of people anticipated, I've still had a blast covering it and checking it all out with you guys and with uh, my good friend Matt Kyle. So much love to all sifters, all you guys who support us in any way, shape, or form, even if it's just retweeting our tweets or whatever. It all makes a difference for us. Even if you're just reviewing our podcasts on iTunes or wherever, it makes a big difference for us. So um, we'll see you guys on Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, right back here at twitch.tv slash siftedgames. Until then, get out there and play all those demos. I think Microsoft today dropped like 40 ID at Xbox demos or something. Mm -hmm. Like, So there's, there, there's stuff out there to play. Check out Final Fantasy Origin if they can get it to actually work. Yeah. How long is that supposed to be live, actually? I don't know. Hopefully they get it fixed before it's supposed to go down. Yeah, I imagine they'll extend it if they, yeah, I would if, hope if, so. if they fix it. Yep. And Sable does have a demo up if people are curious yep. about that. I check that I, out, too. That's the only thing I managed to get around to yesterday. But uh, Yeah. So anyway, that's it for e our live coverage of E3 2021. Thanks again for coming along for the ride. We love you guys. Have yourselves a great rest of the week.